sport bike cornering basics. All right, so before you go out and street ride, don't forget what the name of the game is. It's to make it home in one fucking piece. One of the most important things to always have in the back of your mind is your lean angle. Anything above here is generally pretty safe because you have a higher contact patch on your tire. The farther past you go down that 45 degree angle, the less contact patch your tire has. Imagine this being a corner at the track. A typical line might look something like this. At the track, your lean angles are probably gonna be below this 45 degree line. Now imagine the same corner on the streets and it's a two lane road. You're not gonna be crossing into the other lane. Most street corners will force you to use the outside part of the road or the inside part. So it's generally safer to try to keep your bike as upright as possible when you're cornering on the streets. Some of the body parts you're gonna use when cornering is your heel, your knee, your hips, your shoulders, sometimes your elbows if you want to be a street Rossi, and your wrists. I use my mirror as a gauge to position my head. I try to get my eyes just past the mirror, and what I'm doing is I'm constantly scanning what I can't see in front of me. This is you taking the corner. This is where your eyes should be looking at all times. And it's always changing, but it's always going farther until finally you're back on a straight line. The worst thing you could do is fixate on a target. This will cause you to go wide. What most people do when they're going wide is they'll look into the direction that they're going, maybe hit the brake, the bike will stand up, and they'll ride right off the road. I've seen it happen multiple times, and it typically happens with new riders. Here's where that 45 degree safe angle comes into play. If you start to feel yourself go wide, don't look into the direction that you're drifting. Try to look deeper into the corner, into the things you can't see. And since you're on that 45 degree safe angle, you can actually bring the bike down lower and sometimes hit the throttle harder, which will bring you back in. All right, here's a few pro tips. Keep your upper body as loose as possible. And while you're leaned over, you should be able to let go of your outside hand. Rather than sitting all the way forward like this, you want to shift your butt back and lock your heel and your knee into the tank. This is what holds you in place. When you're cornering on a sport bike, you're mostly using your hips, shoulders, and head to point you into the direction that you're trying to go. You're not actually turning the wheel to help you get around the corner. When you're taking a corner on a sport bike, you're actually doing this thing called counter steering. If it's a left-hand corner, I'm just pushing the left clip on a little bit. It's the same concept on the right for a right corner. Don't get counter steering confused with counterweight. I'm not going to go into body position too much. I know a lot of these elbow dragging squids will be in the comment section. Here's a pro pro tip on the throttle side when you're making a right hand corner. When you're on the throttle and you go to brake, it typically looks like this. And you'll come into the corner like this. When you're done with your trail braking, most people will hold this position and go right into throttle. Problem with that is your wrist is in a weird position. What you want to do instead is brake, finish your braking, and readjust slightly so that your wrist is in a more natural position. This technique keeps tension off the front end where you need to be really, really loose. I have a playlist for all you ding-dongs asking me to cover topics that I've already made videos on. Check it out.